This is turmeric. <clears throat> Don't judge me because I've got a straw. It is yellow. I want radiant skin, not yellow tea. So today uh, I've decided that I would do a few do's and don'ts in the literary field. From my own personal experience, when I read other books or I watch other films, I know what I like to see and what I feel actually gets you interested. Because there are a lot of things out there that you enjoy and you go, yeah, that was good, that was good. But you don't really, you don't really know why. And then there are other things that they draw you in straight away and you just keep wanting more and more and more. Um, I'm gonna quickly shut this door because no one needs to see the washing. My basic focus today is to get you feeling comfortable with what you're writing and how you're going to write it without actually saying this is this is how you start a chapter. If you want to do a successful chapter the first thing you've got to do before anything is know where you're going with it so as I said in my previous video you have a little synopsis of each stage of your book that you want to write and uh, follow it highlight it this is the area that i'm going to focus on today and then you just try and uh, pull out some good information from that from your imagination because you are a creative person okay so five things five do's five don'ts both of them are linked to each other first one that i would go with today do set the scene every single chapter that you write you'll want to set the scene somehow whether it be where the person is how the person is feeling, whatever is relevant to that chapter at the time. So for instance, uh, one chapter I wrote started with her reflecting on a boyfriend, a boyfriend that she's currently dating. And I wanted to expand on the fact that he's a bit, a bit plain for her. Um, so I started with an emotion. I didn't start with where she was, I started with how she felt. So I set the scene with everything he did pissed me off. Okay, so straight in there, whoa, what's going on? Now, why, why is she so hacked off with this vanilla guy? Well, then you'll find out as I describe him, as I set the scene of the mood and then how they met and where they are today. So it sort of follows a generic pattern until it a bit like a, a, a triangle upside down. You want to start like that and then work your way to the bottom. Is a don't, which is do not describe every inch unless absolutely necessary. So describe what you need to. Keep it succinct, but you know, you don't need to make a door stop out of it. Otherwise people start to be like, mm. describe enough. So you feel like you know about that character from the dimension and the angle that they're going from. And, uh, yeah, just, just stick to it, keep it relevant, keep it succinct, but keep it creative to you, keep it true to you. My next do um, is linked to that, which is focus on the mood of the chapter. What kind of feeling are you trying to gauge from this chapter? So if I'm just going to quickly have a look at my last chapter, how I began that, just so you know what kind of mood she's in. You start with like, you sure you've got everything? We dive straight into a conversation that she's having with somebody. So there's a buoyancy, there's a fun from her mum and her friends in the background. She's describing what her friend's doing and it's relevant to a further conversations she has down the line, which I won't give away because this is a closely guarded secret right now. Um, but yeah, so focusing on the mood of that chapter once you've mapped out how you want to write this chapter and how you set the scene will be dictated by what kind of mood is carried within that. If it's a positive mood, if it's an angry mood, if it's a, an awe inspired mood, whatever it is, just um, work it from there. But then don't from that get too artsy, which follows the same sort of describing every inch. If you're going to describe something, which I completely tell you, you should describe, uh, otherwise you're gonna have a bit of a one dimensional, two dimensional, you, you'll want, you want your character to come alive, you want everything to feel alive. So actually a tip within that tip is try and use experiences that you've had in reality because that will really help you just 
work it out. You know, when you get a little bit of a block and you're not sure how to write it. Uh, how do I describe this character? Maybe take an element of somebody's personality that you know and pull it because you know how to describe what you yourself have experienced. So it makes life easier. And you don't need to get too artsy because sometimes when you add all these flamboyant, you know, four syllabled words, four plus maybe, let's see, um, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It makes the reader feel intimidated and confused. You need to be able to, at least if you're going to use a big word, have a purpose for that big word and make sure that it carries a nice flow. People understand what you're trying to say. Even if they don't know the word, they know what you're trying to say based on the sentence you're having or that you've created. I was talking, which my do girl gold, which then say do. Do, make it punchy. Make it punchy. If you remember me earlier saying that, I, just, I brought that sentence out saying, everything he did pissed me off. Boom. What? Why? What did he do? What did he do to piss you off? What's, the, what's, what's up with this guy? It makes you think. So, yeah, make it punchy. Make your, in not every intro, but if you're wanting to make a point, but like, think of it like a headline. Keep it, keep it succinct. Make it relevant. And it'll embody the mood. If you want to make something punchy, then don't use naff adjectives yay who remembers being in school and being told do not use the word nice i remember being told that the word nice was virtually forbidden so we never used it i never i tried to not use it anything like that that was going to be frowned upon or i could feel like if i handed that in my teacher is going to look at it and give it a big red cross through it she's gonna hate me so don't use naff adjectives. If you're going to describe something, then describe it with a bit of passion, a bit of zest. Obviously, if you want to have a bit of the artsiness, then go for it. But try for that middle adjective, if anything, when you're going to start with, because you know wants to hit a book and then be confused straight away. So make it punchy and use a good adjective. Use a fun one. Use one that's got a bit of personality and, and a bit of positioning in your wording that has a bit of a flow, so it's got the right syllables to it, it's just got the right attitude for what you're trying to say. Um, if I want to say that, I don't know, she's beautiful, I wouldn't say she's pretty. Even if they come across as a synonym that's very similar. Pretty and beautiful is not the same. Beautiful's just got a bit more flow to it, it's got a bit more elegance and flamboyance. And pretty is like, oh, she's kind of, she's pretty, she's cute. You know, it's not the same. We're trying to say something different, so use good adjectives. Use ones that roll really nicely within the sentence and that are interesting. Interesting to read that they create a little picture in themselves. Okay, um, so do, number four, explore the character. Again, this sort of works with um, setting the scene and describing things. Don't describe every inch, but describe the character. I don't, sorry, I'm going to confuse you. Don't describe or explore the character whereby you're telling me everything in one go. No one wants some kind of Tinder bio for a character exploration. Just try and describe it within their body language, within the, the framework that they're in. So if I want to tell you that my main character, Katrina, has green eyes, long hair, she's about the same height as me, she's a bit of a, a crazy, excitable character. Describe that within her actions. So she's flicking her hair when she's talking to you, this long brown hair. She stared at me with angry green eyes. I don't know, I'm, I can't speak as well as I can write, I can assure you of that, but explore the character in a way that's detailed, within the manuscript, not as a block. It doesn't even matter if you, you sort of do it scattered throughout because people want to build a picture. So build a picture through setting the scene, focusing on the mood, keeping it succinct, and, and then exploring that character through those methods. Don't, therefore, in order to introduce these things, 
start sentences with like, I did, if you're first person, she did, he said, they went, it's really quite boring if someone just said, I went to the shops, so and so went with me, we bought an apple, we went to the checkout and the lady there was rude. Oh, if I read a book like that, if I read or saw anything like that, I'd be bored shitless. So please start sentences. With the, I, I prefer to start sentences that aren't like she or he or I. Or I don't like to focus it like that. Instead, my preference would be to focus a bit on the scenario. So if I'm going to grab up another example. So this was my character talking about her current boyfriend and how she doesn't like the fact that she has to sacrifice a bit of her personality for him. So, we go with this. Like a sexually frustrated teenager confined to a life of abstinence, I only wanted it more. Vexation grew in every element of my core, and I was struggling to stop the explosion from bubbling over. So that bit from like a sexually frustrated teenager, that, you know, instead of just saying, I, I, I just didn't like it. I wanted to be able to explore my, uh, my, my personality. I just went straight with the emotion that being suppressed makes me feel like and describe that to then lead on to it. It's just a bit more interesting, gives you a little bit more grounding. Uh, it sounds, to be honest, it makes you laugh. I like to have a bit of something that makes you get, I can relate to that, it's a good trope, I like that. Okay, so last point, points. Do have a beginning, a middle, and an end to each chapter. I know that sounds really weird, because you're thinking, well, isn't the beginning, middle, and an end just for the story as a whole? Well, if you're wanting to write a book with plenty of body, each chapter's got to go through its own mini beginning, middle, and end story itself. Otherwise, where does it stop? Why does it stop? It just feels a bit random. So yeah, have a beginning, a middle, and an end based on those other points that I've mentioned earlier. And therefore, the last thing is don't write for the sake of writing. If you're not in the mood, if you haven't quite figured out those beginning, middle, and ends, and you're not really sure what to say, don't bother compar comparing yourself to other people and how much they write that day because it just, it just puts you off. I tend to go through phases where I could write thousands of words a day and then weeks where I couldn't think of writing anything. This is your journey, this is your pleasure, and it takes as long as it takes, so don't worry about how long it takes you, because Rome wasn't built in a day, if you all know that phrase, so yeah, just, just enjoy, enjoy the process. If I just quickly summarise, do set the scene, don't describe every inch unless it's necessary to the story. Do focus on the mood of every chapter. Don't get too artsy, because big words are great, but only if they're purposeful. Do make it punchy, yes? Okay, that's how you introduce it, make it punchy. And don't use enough adjectives, because that's not punchy, that's boring. Do explore the character characters, where you know, however many there are. Try and encompass quite a few, otherwise you're going to have a bit of boring. Don't start every sentence with I and she and they and he, because it's boring again do have a beginning a middle and an end to every chapter as well as the story as a whole and don't write for the sake of writing trust me if you follow all of these things then you'll find that you will have plenty to write because i always think that when i write my synopsis i'm not going to be able to fill this out as a book but i'm just under halfway through my synopsis and i've written thirty-six thousand four hundred and thirty words so it's just showing you it's doable Okay, so I'll be bringing back some more stuff in the near future. And if you liked today's, then give it a thumbs up. If if you didn't, then I'm really, really sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. I've let you down. Okay. And as always, ciao, bellas.